Welcome back modelers. Trekworks here again with our continuing build of the Polar Lights 1000 scale classic enterprise snap fit kit. Well I've made some progress. Uh, I've gone in now and uh, finished out the uh, secondary hull here. I've gone in and used some of the 3M uh, filler to cover up some of these seams. I have this piece glued together now. I've got some uh, put uh, putty filled in these little gaps here where the uh, engine pylons attached to the hull along the dorsal neck here and along the bottom and along the seams uh, on the sides of the uh, pylons so this part is uh, basically ready to be painted primed and painted and so that's looking pretty good same thing here on our warp nacelles now the gaps on these parts were very slight they were they fit very well so it didn't require much putty at all I basically laid that in there and sanded it down with some 320 and then sanded it final sanded it with some 600 and uh, they're they're ready for paint as well <clears throat> the saucer section I haven't done that yet because we've got some little detail parts that need to go in here we've got to put our little uh, navigation lights inside and the bridge and the sensor dome on the bottom so the plan for that is is what I'll be doing is I'll be painting these pieces separately um, what what my the method that I use for doing something like this is uh, I'll mix up my paint and uh, you always want to keep a little extra paint uh, set aside for final touch-ups or final painting that you may need to do so what I'll be doing is I'll be painting this top painting the bottom then coming back in putting my little light assemblies in here the, the uh, sensor dome on the bottom and the bridge top and then I'll assemble it and uh, uh, in order to avoid uh, uh, painting over this because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to come back at that point and put my uh, my uh, my filler along the seam here and then I'll have to retouch up this edge here with the airbrush and what you do there is you uh, just put some masking tape over the top here you've already got this area painted now and your paints gonna match from because you're gonna be painting from the same batch that you started with and uh, you can take and put your masking tape on there and what you do is just slightly it's an old painters trick uh, you basically take your, your your tape and you kind of roll it the edges of it so that you don't get a hard line when you spray if you get over spray right here you won't wind up with a little line left over uh, you'll, you'll it'll blend in really nice you'll have as I said that rolling that tape allows that paint to just kind of lay in there and it doesn't give you any kind of a impression uh, and if you do get a little bit of that you can come with some fine sandpaper such as like 1500 or something like that and you can lightly sand that down if you get any any kind of strange things going on there and then uh, you'll you'll finish off by just spraying this outer ring here and that'll all be sealed up real nice uh, one of the things that I wanted to show uh, on this is is I did run into something along the way so far I've been very pleased with this whole thing uh, this this saucer snaps onto the top of here and there's no gap whatsoever it sits perfectly level uh, so they did a great job with that but uh, the problem that I ran into here is these uh, these warp nacelles are designed to snap in place on top of uh, the pylon here well when I did my dry run here my test run which I always do with a model when I start on it to see what I'm going to run into um, that design is in a word horrible um, it didn't work at all it didn't fit it didn't and if it did attempt to, to, to hold the engine on there it was either crooked or uh, slanted this way or slanted that way or slanted this way so the solution that I came up with is if you can see it here I took the little uh, flat file and I went into this slot here and I slightly enlarged it I mean just to just I just kept working away at it a little bit here and there to get it to the point where it would just slide over uh, the entire uh, the entire top of the pylon here so that you're getting a nice uh, snug fit there and it also gives you just a little bit of a ability to adjust this thing so that uh, when you get both of these parts put on I'll try to get this one worked down there for you um, before you glue these you'd want to put the uh, the saucer on the top as well and then uh, that way you can have, an, have a chance to uh, kind of stand back and look at it and get it all lined up really nice and so you can see that uh, it's looking pretty good and, and that just that tiny little bit of again I'm just barely coming down over the top of this 
and uh, so I'm not going to wind up with my pylons looking too short or, or anything like that. I mean, you can't even tell the difference. And they sit on there really nice like that. Let me go ahead and, uh, well, give me a second here and I'll snap this, uh, I'll snap the saucer onto the top here so you can get an idea of what the overall ship's going to look like. Uh, let's see here, i get these lined up. And what we've got here... Again, this, this saucer fits really, really good. Let me go ahead and snap this on here now. Yeah, it's just got little, like a little embossed line. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue all this stuff. Um, but you can see here, this uh, lines up really well. You, your, your saucer should have just a slight, slight upward tilt to it. That's how the Enterprise should look correctly, not, not nose down or whatever. And the uh, the nacelles are sitting on here perfectly straight. Uh, you get a really nice. Uh, again, you got you got a little wiggle room. You can adjust them just a little bit to your liking, and then you know before that glue sets up. But uh, it's a great profile. It's it's all nice and straight, and uh, so problem solved there. I, I was just a little disappointed as far as how they. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking on that design. How they thought that was going to work, but. Uh, it doesn't work at all, so you'll probably wind up doing some kind of a modification, and that's just one way that you can do it. So there we are. That's a little update. Uh, we'll be heading out to the paint shop next. We'll be applying our, our uh, my usual uh, sequence that I do here. I'll, I'll be putting the pro the plastic product on there first to get my make sure my paint adheres very well. Then I'll prime it. I'll sand it all down with 600, uh, getting rid of any of the edges or anything like that, any imperfections. And then we'll apply our paint. And on this time, I'm going to show you a little bit of how I mix up my paint and uh, how I come up with the colors for this. I'm actually going to be using the uh, uh, second here. I'm actually going to be using the uh, Art Asylum uh, HD version of the uh, Classic Enterprise uh, as a paint reference. Uh, now this this ship here is slightly, in my opinion, it's slightly too dark of a gray, so I'm going to go a little lighter than that. But uh, some of the detail work on here, such as the uh, such as this kind of wear bar, or this this rust belt, if you want to call it that, around the top, I'm going to be doing, and some of the weathering and things like that. So uh, basically, just using this ship for a reference because it's it's fairly accurate, and um, that's the plan. So. Uh, there you go. It's uh, it's just a little uh, little ship. It's small, but it, it's going to display very well. Like I said, the, it's big enough where all the markings are going to look very good on it, and uh, that's where we're at so far. So we'll see you next time for our next update, where we'll we'll be out in the paint shop, getting this thing ready to spray, and uh, we'll see you then. Well, modelers, we're out in the um, paint shop here, and we've got our ship all prepped up. I've already laid down my base coat here. I've got my off-white color on the hull, and now I'm going back and doing the accents, the darker gray accents. I just uh, finished doing the putty work and the leading edge part of the saucer here, so that's all finished off. Um, that's looking good. And I've got these little parts here ready to paint now, a little little trick I learned over the years. Uh, what I did here to help you paint these small parts, I've just taken some masking tape and rolled it up and uh, stuck it down on top of my uh, my paper here and then I've just stuck these little parts on there. They'll stay there uh, not, uh, perfectly in place while you paint. That way you don't have to worry about handling them or anything like that and you can put a nice coat on it. So that that little trick works pretty good. So I'll come back in a second here, I'll mix up some paint, and we'll, um, we'll start spraying these parts. Okay, we're all set and ready to start painting. Uh, we've got our, our dark gray mixed up. We're going to paint these small parts here first. Those are uh, parts that go on the warp nacelles, the impulse deck, and the... Uh, 
the cap that goes on the top of the dorsal at the rear of the saucer. So here we go, let's start spraying. Okay. Give a little quick dry up here with our heat gun. <laughs> okay, these parts are all dried up and ready to go. We had one escape from our uh, tape trap here, but no harm, no foul. It still looks good. But you can see this little trick works pretty good. Uh, these parts were all held in place, and uh, now they're all painted and covered up real nice. So that turned out pretty good. Okay, we're going to switch colors here and go to the gold, and we're going to come back and do these little, uh, these these uh, Bussard collector parts and the uh, deflector dish. Okay, we've got our color switched over to gold now and we're going to start airbrushing our deflector dish. Pretty good. Okay, that's got that covered up pretty good. There you go. It's looking pretty good. Alright. Now we'll do our facade collector parts. Okay, all finished up with that. Now, the paint I used for this gold was just uh, straight out of the bottle uh, Tester's enamel thinned down a little bit and you can spray that straight out of your airbrush. Uh, these other colors I made here for my base color are just uh, a mixture of white and black and a little bit of brown added in there. And uh, our darker gray for the uh, accent areas on the hull darker gray accent areas and so that's pretty much it as far as the paintwork goes on this ship um, I'll come back here in just a second and I'll be doing the uh, starting to do some weathering on the uh, on the primary uh, hull here I'm going to be doing some darkening along the leading edges a little bit here around the uh, circumference and some on the struts here and a little bit on the edges of the uh, warp missiles just to give it kind of a just a slight used look and uh, We'll be back here in just a second with that.
All right, we've switched colors here. We've made up our um, our weathering color, and what we've got here is a combination of white, black, and uh, tan to give an off color here. I just started laying down a little bit uh, on the saucer here, and I'll uh, finish up doing that now. Just want to lay this in ever so slightly. You don't want to overdo it. Okay, we've got some, uh, we're going to do a little bit of work here on the, these little leading edge kind of lines. See that there. Now um, you can always, if you do, if you go a little too far with this, you can always come back with your base. That's the beauty of the airbrush. You can uh, come back in and, and dust a little bit over this with your uh, gray, which in this case I'm probably going to do. I got these a little bit too, some of the stuff going on a little bit too strong here, but that's okay. We can come back and uh, touch that up real nice with our base. And now I'm going to do some work here just a little bit on the uh, on the secondary hull. I went too strong on some of these, but that's okay. Like I said, you can come back now with your base and just uh, blend these in real nice. Both sides here. Do too much. It's not necessary to overdo it. Just a little here and there to get set kind of slight shading effect going on. Something going on in the cell here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is switch back to my base color again one more time and dust over this just a little bit and clean that up and we'll be looking good. Okay, I switched back to our base uh, color and I went back over this and kind of toned this down a whole lot. And then uh, I'm just going to come back one more time here and just dust a little bit of this, uh, this brown color back over the corners here and we're finished with this.
Okay, I'm liking how that looks a whole lot. Um, when we get our uh, decals all mounted on here, this will really add a little bit of realism to it. I'm just going to do a little bit around here on the bottom as well. Just a slight amount there, just to give it a kind of a little bit of a depth. And that's looking great. Got our uh, a little detail work done here on the secondary hull. Really like how that looks. Okay, that's pretty much it for the painting process of this ship. There's just a couple little details to paint. The, the nacelle domes and uh, I'll be putting this thing together and decaling it. So we'll be moving back inside and doing the assembly part. See you there.